Hi, everyone. Very good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. This is Rob from The Drunken Grape, and we've got a great guest today, something I'm very, very passionate about as well, is the world of beer. Now, I stumbled upon this not by accident, but by intent. Uh, about six years ago, I was struggling with beer knowledge when asked to do events, and events were heavily wine laden, but you always had somebody come across and ask about beer. And I came across this fantastic program. We, I'm excited because we have the founder of this program, the Prude Home Beer Education System, a fellow Canadian and a brilliant mind and one of the top elite minds in the world of beer in Roger Middag. Hey, Roger, how you doing today? Hi, Rob. Thank you very much. That's really kind of you to say. Well, it is my experience and it is factually true. Now, something I'm sure the audience would be very interested to know is how this all got started in the first place. I mean, everybody associates sommeliers with wine. A lot of what a lot of wine experts fail to realize, myself included at the beginning of all this uh, training in beer, is in fact beer is older and beer has a, a deeper history and it's wider reaching. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, I think one of the really key, key things is that um, beer can't really be put into a tiny little spot. It, it changes all the time and beer styles are largely interpreted by, by brewers. But um, for me where it started, was uh, it, it would be nice to just say that it started in 2009 when we created Prudhomme Beer Certification, but it goes way further back for me. Uh, back yeah, to, yeah, no, it's true. Back to 1997, I, wow. I got hired by uh, a company called the Olin Specialty Beer Company, and we got trained in Belgium. And when you get trained in Belgium, you get all this passion about glassware and about how beer is made and what kind of food it goes along with. Um, it's just an unbelievable experience. So in essence, I've been educating people about beer since 1997. Um, 2005, I started Thirst for Knowledge, which is a, a beer education company. And we did a lot of tasting, beer dinners, um, had a small educational platform that I referred to as the beer school. And then in 2008, I started working on creating a certification program that was centered in Canada that took a Somali approach to it, um, but was really very related to, um, to beer itself. And so that's when I created Prudhomme Beer Certification. It was in 2009 that we've launched. So uh, we've been around for over 11 years. We're one of the oldest beer certification programs in the world and the very first one to go online. Wow, and, and it's funny because, you know, for those listening and those particularly in the United States who may be familiar with Cicerone, um, in fact, they started, uh, Ray Daniels started that in 2007. So when you look at it for the origins of your program and what you've done, it actually took off much, much earlier and uh, was already delivering high, high level education and knowledge into things like, you know, beer and food, food pairings with beer. And in fact, beer is actually easier to pair with food than wine. And um, no, that's, that's just incredible. Um, I imagine too, the reach of your program, as I know, has gone very, very, very far as well. It has, um, even though we're, we're focused and centered in Canada, and that, that's a big area of where we want to grow, um, we're starting to get people from um, all over the world. So I, we've had people in Belgium, um, the Czech Republic, Hungary. Um, I have somebody in uh, Israel that's taking the program right now. We've obviously had um, quite a few people from the United States as well. Um, so. I think with the fact that it's an educational platform and that it's available in level one and level two online, that we have a great reach. And I'm going to start working on my level three going online. Um, oh, wow. This year and probably won't launch it until uh, 2021 because it's an extremely complex program, as you well know, to be able yeah. to deliver that online because I, I want people to be able to have an educational experience and not simply go and look for information on their own and develop their own knowledge. I, I want to be able to bring it to them. 
Yeah, and, and the beauty of this whole program too is uh, also having that offering. I know COVID's disrupted things a little bit, but the classroom offering, I know I was really happy to take the classroom uh, offerings for level two and three. I did level one online because it was easy. It was easy for me to sort of segue, get an interest, uh, get into the intro of beer itself. Um, but if you really want to delve deep, I, I, your program is fantastic. And, and I look at it, it is the only beer, multi-level educational beer sommelier system out there that really offers an in-depth classroom approach as well, which, I, which is huge for learning. It, it does. And, and thank you for saying that as well. I think um, my personal belief, and you and I have shared this before, is that the classroom is really um, the best place to learn because there's, there's a lot of interaction between the instructor and the student um, and also amongst the group. So when you, when you have a group of like-minded people who are all asking different questions or similar questions, the learning experience exponentially goes up. And so for me, the classroom is really the highlight of our program. And so now what I've tried to do, especially with COVID, um, is take the classroom setting and turn it into the online. So now um, I'm really happy that the online programs, both in level one and level two, are identical to the classroom. And um, in some cases, with level one, I'm just starting this this week, but we're actually doing webinars on tasting components and any Q and A. So we've got a small That's group of cool. people that are going through the online. Um, but I, but I'm with you 100. percent I think the classroom is really um, the ultimate stage for learning and for education. And uh, we are, as you mentioned, the only one that really does a multi-level approach in the classroom. There are some that do only the sommelier portion in the classroom, but it's really, really intense and it's very expensive. And um, I think that in order to process information properly, you need to be able to do this over a longer period of time and not cram everything into a week or two weeks. Um, no, I, so I, yeah, I'm, no, I'm really I, happy. I'm with you there. I totally agree. Even looking at other wine courses, it's the same scenario. The, um, I remember doing the level three WSET condensed in six weeks and the fail rate through that was through the roof. I mean, it's already hard enough as is in a 17 week program or curriculum and being able to draw it out and extend it um, really, really helps with retention and learning and retain and retaining it to use in a practical setting later. So yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, we talked a little bit about in the beginning what topics, but what topics do you cover? I mean, the range, I know the range of this program is huge, but the listeners really, a lot of them may, may not. So um, talk a little bit about the topics that are covered throughout the program, because I know it's very, very extensive. Yeah, I, at the beginning, we start um, pretty simply. I mean, we, we deal with ingredients and brewing because it's important, um, you know, because because beer is not as affected by terroir or geographical locations. Um, it's really important to understand what those ingredients and what the brewing processes bring into each individual beer. So we, we deal with ingredients and brewing process. Uh, we deal with the history of beer because I'm a firm believer, um, as you said earlier, that um, there is a really rich history and there are great stories and anecdotes to be able to um, highlight and show how styles have evolved over time. So we deal a lot with history in level one and level two. Um, we do uh, draft beer. So we talk about draft beer in all of the levels. And um, there's a, a very great focus on pouring and serving and um, a key one on beer and food. And once you get into the upper levels, uh, we spend probably uh, more time than anything else on sensory development. So we help people to understand um, how to describe beers properly, how to evaluate them properly, and what they're looking through is an objective lens and not a subjective lens. So we, we want people to lose the ability to say, I only like this particular thing, when in fact, what we're trying to do is analyze the beer to find out how can we best describe it? How can we showcase what somebody else has created in a glass to other people? Um, so we spend an inordinate amount of time on, on sensory, especially in level three and level four. It's, it's really highly sensory oriented. Um, 
But I think that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, we, we talk about those main uh, issues. In level three and level four, we talk a lot about glassware shape and how glassware actually affects the experience of the, the beer drinker and how it can change what a certain style actually tastes like or, or even smells like. Yeah, and I remember too, there's a, um, you know, there's, there, there's a, always that element of people that want blind tastings. And we covered in level three, we did a ton of blind tastings. I mean, I, I came out of that class and I've been forever changed. I can smell the difference between a porter and a stout. I can look at a glass and tell if it's, if it's an IPA or if it's wheat based and just by the, um, you know, the fennels, the aromas that come from the beer. Also going into hops, uh, you know, we, we sampled all kinds of hops and you notice the fruitier they got, the more bitter they usually were in a glass. Uh, we went to Canada Malting House. I mean, there was some really cool things in this program yeah. that I've never seen in any other beverage certification program. Uh, you know, in the wine world, you can go to a vineyard, sure, but it's going to be on your own dime and expense. It's not going to be structured from the classroom. Whereas with this, we actually walked through McClausland Brewery. Is that, I think I said it correctly, maybe not. Um, but we also went to Canada Malting in Montreal. And for anyone listening that wants to delve into the world of beer, this whole experience is incredible. Now, the other part too is what makes Prude Home different from the other programs? You know, again, we did mention and touch upon Cicerone, which is sort of in some ways your main competitor. I'm just thinking, you know, just elaborate a little bit on it because uh, I know you, you yeah. have so much to offer here. Yeah, I think what makes Prudhomme different is that we, we take a different approach. I mean, I've always been taught um, to build an educational platform. So for me, it's not about um, telling you what to study and then you go do it yourself. For me, it's about providing guiding principles of the information that is deemed necessary in order for somebody to understand and appreciate beer a little bit better. And my view on, on a sommelier designation is that you should be able to have a conversation. You should be able to explain to other people exactly what it is that you understand and know about beer. So I think the biggest, um, the biggest difference between Prudhomme and Cicerone is that Cicerone is a certification program that rewards you for learning information. And Prudhomme is an educational program that takes the time to provide the information to you that it deems necessary for success within the industry. The other two major platforms that are uh, around the world, and there is a, another one coming, but uh, the other two major platforms around the world are intensive sommelier programs that, that run over a week to 10 days to two weeks. And, um, and they're based in uh, Germany and also in the UK. They're, they're available globally in a, in a few different locations. But for me, that intensive learning is, is what separates us. And then we take a very strategic approach to create four different levels. So we start at more of a beginner's level with, with our beer enthusiast program, which is level one. And then we start ramping up the information and the detail and the sensory commitment in level two, level three. And then level four is really all about beer and food and more about style. Um, it is highly sensory oriented. It is more discovery than instruction. Um, and it requires a lot more coaching and mentoring than any of the, the other programs. So I also think that because we're based in Canada, that we take a different approach. We take a holistic approach um, and one that is inclusive of all beers around the world. Even though I'm, you know, we're going to start focusing a little bit more in classroom on Canadian brands. Um, we have this huge appreciation for understanding that some of the legacy brewers that have been around, you know, for hundreds of years actually have quite a bit to offer. And we don't want to push them out of that circle at all. We want to be inclusive to everybody that wants to produce beer or even learn a little bit more about beer. So why, you know, we touched upon the Canadian part. You changed, recently you changed the logo. I love it, by the way, but you, you, you. you've delved you're welcome you've developed this brilliant canadian program why the change to a canadian focus including like your change of logo and branding itself um i know the focus in the underbelly has always been there but now it's 
it's blatant. I think it's great because I think we need to go there. But what's uh, what was your what was your thoughts on that one and, and taking uh, it in that well, direction? Yeah, that's that's a pretty complex question. Um, so, <laughs> uh, first of all, I mean, it was the program was developed by me. I'm Canadian. It's um, primarily um, taught in Canada. We don't really teach classroom anywhere else. Uh, Louis Prudhomme was Canada's first licensed brewer, so there's a historical perspective. But I think more than anything, uh, the last six months have shown us how proud we can be of our country and therefore how proud we can be of our brewers. And I've seen more and more brewers in Canada in the last two to three years start making really outstanding, um, fantastic, true to style versions of what we might normally look at from a global perspective. So I think for me, um, the idea was to entrench Prudhomme as a Canadian uh, beer education platform and celebrate everything that we stand for in Canada. And that is, um, again, being open to a lot of concepts, um, understanding the needs of our students and teaching as opposed to um, having people go out and search for the information all on their own. And, and like I said, I think, um, you know, we have a very diverse culture in Canada. We have um, a very, very robust uh, brewing industry. Um, although, you know, everything is up in the air in the last six months, but our brewers are, are strong. Um, they come from good backgrounds. They're not, we have you know, of the over thousand brewers that we have, the majority are very, very small and um, are growing with the industry themselves. So they're learning, even though they have passion and they have creativity, they're now learning how to adopt science. Um, there's just so much going on in the industry that I really wanted to celebrate Canada as a whole and attach that maple leaf, which is so iconic globally. Um, it is. To our program. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I really think, you know, we think Canada, we think diversity, we think of a country that is inclusive. I mean, I'm really a first generation Canadian. I have white skin. A lot of people don't realize, realize this, but my mother's from Guyana, South America. And I would not have been born here had she not emigrated here. And it's because of the freedom that Canada offers with this that I can see why you're so passionate about it. And you're right. I mean, we have some amazing brewers here I, I, like look at unibrow for instance with blas chambly i saw your post yesterday on facebook for your upcoming talk tomorrow and ladies and gentlemen if you want to tune in uh, tune into roger live i believe it's what 6 p.m eastern standard time on uh, wednesdays yes. um roger gives a brilliant talk and breakdown on individual beer styles that um, it's just fantastic so if you're a big beer enthusiast or you're a sommelier in the wine world and want to step into the beer world I highly recommend you tune into this. But yes, we've got some excellent brewers. I mean, I even think locally here with Flora Hall Brewing and my friend David Longbottom, stylistically, they're just coming up with brilliant beer that matches the profile it should traditionally match. If you look at uh, Unibro with Blanche de Chambly, did it not just win the world's best beer? Well, it, it won the Brilliant world's style. Belgian wheat beer or wheat beer style, absolutely. Uh, Unibrew is, um, for me, one of the global standards on brewing beer, and uh, they have been since 1992. They're they're a phenomenal brewery. Um, a lot of uh, attention to detail and very Belgian focused. And I think that we're fortunate to have a brewer of that reputation here in Canada. I, I absolutely agree. And uh, even uh, even on the macro level, you know, look what Molson and Labatt's have done. I, I mean, these are colossal brewers. Canada, as a brewing nation, is very prolific. So it's great that we have this program. Listen, I uh, want to thank you for taking the time to come out and uh, be on this podcast. I think it's really important that people listening to this realize that there are equally as in-depth programs in the world of beer and beer education out there, such as Prudhomme, which is, I think is the world's best multi-level beer education system out there. I've explored them all. Um, I looked heavily into a range of them before finding this program, and I'm very grateful I did. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, uh, 
please feel free to message me or even better yet, you can uh, message Roger directly. He is on Facebook. He's also on LinkedIn. Um, Thirst for Knowledge is the website. I would highly recommend you take a look at it. Listen, whatever you decide to do, once again, thank you, Roger, for being on the show. Whatever you decide to do, ladies and gentlemen, have an absolutely terrific day. This is Rob from The Drunken Grape.